What's up guys, so do you wanna see how we mounted the Rough Country eight location switch panel on the 22 TRD Pro? Stay tuned, I'll walk you through step by step on how we got it done on this hybrid. All right, so quick look at everything you're gonna get in the box. You have your switch panel right here, a couple different mounting brackets right there. This bracket right here is to mount your circuit board. We are actually not gonna be using that for, for our installation, but just so you know what that is. Um, two different wiring cables. You have your inline 60 amp fuse, bag of hardware up the top, some zip ties, stickers for the lights, depending on what you're gonna mount. You have your positive and negative cables right here. And then this is for the circuit board panel. The only thing not shown here is obviously the instruction booklet, which you're not gonna need. That's why you have me. The only other thing that's not pictured is this. The circuit board itself right there. More on that in a second. All right, so first things first, you gotta come up with a game plan. Where are you gonna put your switch panel and your circuit board? The only kind of recommendation is the circuit board should be close to your battery. I've already kind of gave you a sneak peek at where ours is. I mounted it right on top of the battery. This is gonna vary depending on your installation from person to person. This is really the only part of the install that is gonna be unique to you. As far as the switch panel, you can mount this anywhere you wanna mount it, um, you know, as long as your wiring is gonna reach, which that really shouldn't be an issue. You can even extend the wiring if you really needed to, but switch panel can go anywhere you want. As you saw in the beginning of the video, again, I gave you a little sneak peek at what we did. So that's what you have to do before going any further, come up with a game plan on how you're gonna route the wiring, where you're gonna put your panel, your switch panel, and your circuit board. So once you have your locations picked out, one thing you wanna keep in mind when picking a location is on the circuit board itself, you can see how there's a slotted area right here and right there. You wanna have access to run cables down through those areas. Basically, that allows your cover to fit on when you're all done with the installation. So all I've done so far is we brought the positive, the longer of the red power wires, the one black, um, the negative cable, and then the two wiring harnesses, you can't, they're the only two in the kit. That's why I didn't show this on camera. You can't mess it up. So the positive, negative, and the two um, wiring harnesses run them up through this side and connect them to their relative spots. So positive goes to right here by that screw right there, just a Phillips head, negative, four pin, and a two pin. So before we go any further, I just wanted to mention something real quick. Um, so this is an eight switch panel, as you saw. So you have two circuits f rated for five amps, two circuits for 10, two for 20, and two for 30. Okay, the only stipulation is you cannot have more than 60 amps running at one time. So if you're running different light bars or light pods or whatever, 60 amps is a lot. That shouldn't be really an issue for you. But just so you know, you can't have more than 60 amps running at one time. And um, again, you do have the eight different channels as rated right there. Next up, you wanna take your shorter positive wire that they give you and you wanna connect up your inline fuse. Now, when you're looking at it in this orientation, the longer red cable that comes off of your circuit board is gonna to go to this location on the circuit breaker. Then the shorter cable is going to connect up here. Now, the only thing I do wanna mention is, and let me just get this tightened on and I'll show you real quick. All right, so you can see how the inline fuse should look. The longer red cable coming off the circuit board to the bottom, coming off the top is the shorter red cable. This end is gonna go to the battery, but what I wanted to point out was I had to cut the ring terminal that they send the way this short cable come, actually all the cables. I'm gonna have to do it for the negative as well, which I'll show you. But the ring terminals are too small. They don't fit over the lug of your battery. Um, I don't know if that was just a mistake. I don't know if that's how all the kits come, but just be aware of that. I did have to cut the ring terminal off of this end. And I had, with all the wiring I do, I have, I have plenty of ring terminals, all different sizes. I'll put the correct size on your screen for you. I'll even put a direct link down below if you need to grab a couple. Um, they're very cheap, no big deal, but just so you know, this end is what's gonna go directly to your positive side of the battery. Um, you, you will have to replace that ring terminal. The one they supply will not go over the, the, the lug on your battery. The other thing is too, with this, with this install being on a hybrid, it's kind of part of the, there's so many videos on these switch panels on YouTube. The reason I wanted to make my own is with these hybrids, having the battery underneath the rear seat 
I'm not gonna lie, it kind of sucks. <laughs> you, you don't, th usually this is all done up underneath the hood. You have plenty of spots to run wiring and you know, mount your fuse and your, your circuit board and blah, blah, blah. We're dealing with extremely limited space in here. I'm not even exactly sure how I'm gonna secure this. For right now, you know, again, we're not gonna connect to the battery just yet anyway, but for right now, I'm just gonna kind of tuck the fuse down, you know, underneath this panel, underneath this seat until i try to figure something better out with that I, again we're so limited on space in here having the battery underneath the rear seat makes installations like this a little more complicated so but that inline fuse is now connected we're just going to set it aside not connecting to the battery just yet you can see the the negative coming off of the circuit panel still over here loose nothing is connected to the battery just yet next up you're going to take the longer of the wiring harnesses that has this connection on the end. This goes to your switch panel itself. So you're gonna run this to wherever you have your switch panel. I'm gonna take mine down below. It's gonna pop out down there. You can see I already have my kick panels up. Um, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail on how to take all these panels off. They're very simple, but I also have a video on the channel I'll link down below for you on how to tear apart the entire dash. These kick panels just pop up. They're only held in by clips. So just get your fingernail or your fingers underneath, pop up. So I'm gonna run it down. It's gonna pop out in there run it straight up underneath that panel there. And then it's gonna pop out right up underneath here by the driver's seat. What I did, ran it up underneath this flap. There's always ways to hide wiring. This is our amp um, for the JBL system. So I just kind of tucked it alongside there. Make sure our seats slide, so make sure you're underneath the seat bracket so you don't get pinched anywhere. Took it underneath the driver's seat. And you can see right there, so it's tucked back in there, you'll never see it. And I, this is just kind of temporary. I might actually extend this wiring and make it even cleaner. But I basically just tucked it up underneath that panel. And let me show you where it pops out. So here you can see it pops out underneath your shift panel and runs right back up in there. You can see it moving because that's where our panel is obviously mounted as you saw. Perfect location, just enough wiring. I did not have to extend it for this application. But as I mentioned, I may extend it in the future and run it a different way um, just to keep it cleaner, but this works for now. I may have mentioned it, but this is one thing I'm not gonna show in this video is how to take this center console area apart. I have a video here on the channel that literally shows you how to take this entire dash apart, not just the middle area. It's very simple to do, but not everybody's gonna mount their panel right there. So not everybody's gonna need to know how to do all this. If you wanna know, check it out. I'll link that video down below, but it's very simple to get that area. It looks a mess, but trust me, it's easy. Check out that other video if you wanna learn how. So here's where we are at. We have our piece from the middle console that has our wireless charger in it. We drilled a half inch hole right there and I did bore it out just a little bit, just big enough to get that connection to go through there from the switch panel. We have the switch panel mounted to the piece that I 3D printed. I, I'm gonna print this another one in black. This, I actually, I'm not gonna lie, this was the first piece that I printed. I was just doing some rough, you know, <laughs> measurements and things and it actually worked out. It was pure luck. Um, so that's why it's green. I was using green because I don't use that color a lot for anything else. It was more of a practice piece that ended up working out perfectly, but I will reprint another one in black. So that's all we have going so far. What we're going to do, we're going to get the center console put all back together and this mounted to the, um, this piece here on the panel. We'll give you a look when we're all done there. There we have it guys easily within reach while you're driving. Still have access to the phone charger, even though I don't use that much. Still have access to this whole area down here, in my opinion, perfect location for that panel. Let's wrap up the install with the other wiring. The last wiring harness is that two pin that has a red and a white wiring coming off of it. So basically we just did the same thing, ran it down through that slot underneath that panel here. You can see where it pops out. And these two wires, you are gonna have to extend. Again, having the hybrid, having the battery back here under the seat in the hybrid is kind of a pain because basically we have to run these two wires up to our fuse box to connect using an add a fuse. And I'll show you where. So you can see the two butt connectors right there. I just simply used um, 14 gauge. 14 is probably overkill. You could even use 16, um, but we just extended it, ran it up underneath there, same route. You can see, here it is right here. Now this, you're gonna run up, and up underneath there is gonna be a grommet. Let me see if I can get you a look. You can see the grommet right there. That's gonna, you have to run through there. 
using a wire fish or whatever you have, that's gonna pop us into the engine bay. All right, here we are in the engine bay. You can see the grommet is down in there where the wires pop out. Here are the two wires. We have our red and then this black one, just think, think of this as the white wire because that's what we use to extend that white wire um, that we're dealing with. So the red coming from that harness, all I did was connect it with an Atafuse. Whenever this red um, wire is getting power, your backlighting will be on on your switch panel. That's why you can't connect this directly to your battery or the, the backlighting would always be on on your switch panel. So what we're gonna do, we have the Atafuse already connected as you can see, you wanna come in and find a fuse that's only getting power when either the truck is running or when you push the start button twice so your ignition is on but the truck's not actually running. Um, and the fuse I'm gonna use is right here. Um, you, there, it's an empty slot right now because we already have the factory fuse. You can see we have the factory 7.5 amp fuse in the bottom slot and the top slot is the new 7.5 amp fuse. If you're not familiar with that a fuse, I'm not gonna go into detail on these. I cover them in other videos. They're very easy to use, just Google them and, and they're very easy to, to understand what you're actually doing. So that slot right here, so the one behind this 7.5 is the slot that we're gonna be using. Again, that factory 7.5 was in that position. I just removed it, put it in the add fuse. So now we're just gonna simply connect the add fuse in that location. Now the red wire is good to go. Now coming back here to the black wire or think of it as the white wire because we just extended it. This, I'm not connecting this to anything right now. Basically this wire, the white wire, allows you to dim your backlighting on your switch panel. So what you'd have to do is you'd have to actually take this to your um, your factory dimming switch on the dash. I'm not worried about that feature. Honestly, guys, I mean, I'm not worried about dimming the lights on my, on my switch panel. I didn't really care about that feature. I did extend the wiring in case I ever want to do it, but I'm basically just going to cap this for right now, you know, electrical tape it, tuck it down, protect it out of the way, make it look nice and neat. But that's what you would do with the white wire. You would take it to the dimmer switch um, in our on your dash on your console and you'd connect it to the dimmer control there that way you know as you dim down or dim up your lights on your your dashboard the backlighting on your switch panel would dim as well all right so there you can see fuse panel or i'm sorry fuse box cover is on we have our wiring coming through here i made a little notch on the cover um, to fit the wiring through that other fuse um the other add a fuse in there, that's for our compressor. Don't pay attention to that. That's what that pink wire that you're looking at down there is. So, all right, so we have our wiring tucked up underneath there, nice and neat. I'm gonna put some wire loom on that, some black wire loom, just again, to make it as neat as possible. You guys know how I am with wiring. So, all right, let's go back to the battery and uh, yeah, we'll wrap this up. So go ahead and make your final connections to the battery. So the that longer red with the inline fuse directly to your positive the black or the negative to the negative part of the battery. And don't forget, you do have to swap out that lug, um, or I'm sorry, the ring terminal um, in order for it to fit over the battery lug. There's one last thing we need to do in order to be able to use our cover and make it fit with the panel that goes over this. So let me show you that and we're all done. So last thing we need to do is once you have the um, cover on the circuit board, if you look down here, you can see it sits just below the surface it's almost flush so what you have to do in order to get the cover right there that usually covers this whole area you can see on the back how there's like webbing it's just basically for support what i did was i took my um, my multi-tool my oscillating tool and basically just trimmed out the webbing that blade worked perfect to do it i just kind of went right along the bottom here cut out the webbing that would go that would typically be over this area here and now i'll show you it'll fit on there perfect no issues it doesn't rub or anything at all kind of just works out it gives you just enough room to put that panel back on with no issues so i'll give you an up close look at where exactly we cut out the webbing if you want to pause it or whatever um, basically just right behind these two pins right here is where i started and then from side to side and it's like how how far up I went, I just kind of eyeballed it. I just lined it up, flipped it over and marked it, you know, where I thought that would be sitting and it worked out perfect. So once you get that webbing out of the way, as you'll see, it'll now 
easily snap back on there, sits nice and flush, no problems at all. Before I forget, I just wanted to mention this, um, your inline fuse, because we're dealing with the hybrid and the lack of space, as we mentioned back here, it comes with this clear plastic cover. Make sure you put that on there and make sure it's on there nice and tight. But that's gonna protect your two um, connection points. You don't want you don't want this touching the frame or anything. It'll short out, obviously. So because we're just gonna kind of tuck it down in here for right now until I can find a better solution for mounting it. Um, again, just make sure you have that cover on there. It'll protect both connection points. You're good to go. You won't have to worry about anything shorting out. So here's just a quick little demonstration on how this thing works. You can see backlight um, is blue. Whenever this thing is getting power, that backlighting will be on. You have eight slots, as we mentioned. Um, right now, we're only using four, and then I just put the little Rough Country emblem down there, and then these three we blacked out. They send blank stickers um, that you can use until you're, you know, ready to pop them off and, and, you know, install an accessory. Basically, whenever you turn, like right there, we have our ditch lights in slot number one. You can see whenever you turn an accessory on, you get a red light above that area showing you that that slot or that accessory is getting power one of the other things i wanted to show which i really am going to like this feature because living in the country and a lot of dark roads you know nighttime back country roads let's say i have my ditch lights and two of my two of my light bars on you can see right there well say it's car say a car is coming towards us and instead of having to individually turn each one on and off what you can do is the power button in the middle if you just push that it'll turn everything off the cool thing is when the car passes you, if you want to turn them back on, again, instead of having to do each individual slot, it remembers the last thing you had on. So if I just push the power button, you can see all three come on. And that works for any combination. So let's just say we have that combination running. You turn it off, turn it back on. It remembers exactly how it was when you turned it off. So just a cool little feature. Again, most of these panels have that function. I just wanted to show you that the Rough Country does as well. I definitely like this thing. I recommend it for sure. Easy install. And in that location is just perfect to me. Like I'm sitting in the driver's seat right now. It's facing directly at me. It's at a slight angle up. I just, I couldn't be happier with how that turned out. So we'll give you a little bit better look at that 3D printed piece right back in here. I kind of contoured it around give you a little bit better look you can see how it hooks around there and as i mentioned i think i mentioned basically i just have it stuck to the truck with um, heavy duty gorilla tape and then i just have the switch panel stuck to that piece with heavy duty gorilla tape um, double-sided tape so it's rock solid it's on there i was gonna kind of come up with a more permanent mounting solution but i don't think i need to i mean you can see I, i'm pushing buttons i mean it's it's pretty solid on there so if i don't have any problems with it popping off i am going to reprint a black piece um like i mentioned just so you know it kind of blends well um that green was just a practice piece i was just trying to use up that filament but you can kind of get an idea of what i did there all right so that's a little bit better and all i did the cable that's coming off the back of the switch panel um all I did was I drilled a hole directly straight down through the 3D printed piece, fed the cable through that hole, then through the hole that we drilled on um, this panel with the wireless charger, and we made our connection back there behind that panel. So, all right, so that's just a little bit of a look at that 3D printed piece and how exactly I did it. There you have it, guys. It's that easy to get this thing installed. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. As always, we'll get them addressed for you. Appreciate you guys watching. Can't wait to get all these other install videos done now. The ditch lights, the, uh, the light bars, the reverse pods, all that good stuff. Basically holding off until I got this in the truck to do all that. Um, you know, so this now we can run directly to this panel. and won't, won't have to redo anything down the line. So stay tuned. Make sure you're subscribed. Again, any questions on anything you saw in this video, put them down below. I'm always happy to help. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.